Hello there, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video was going to be about faceting a couple of tektites that I thought I had, but I've recorded this intro about seven times now, and there's no end in sight, so I think we're just going to be doing a little bit of a rant here, slash clarification of what terminology means. So if you're not interested in that, uh, feel free to click away, and I hope to see you on a future video. But uh, let's get into why these are not even pseudotectites. Okay, so first off, I want to say thank you very much to Rock Hounding community member Delilah for gifting me this piece of Libyan desert glass and a couple of these uh, Columbianites is what they're marketed as. Uh, she got those from Kyle over at World of Rock Hounds, does live sales Saturdays and Tuesdays. And okay, you know, go check him out. The Saturday videos might move to Friday, but you know, go go see his channel for a schedule. And uh, I also won. I won the third Columbia night from a giveaway during one of his live sales. So when I first got these Columbia nights, I made a post on YouTube like, "Oh, I got these tectites from Kyle. I'm really excited to facet them." And then. That was on me for calling them tectites because they're not. Uh, Kyle called them pseudotectites, and that's what they're marketed as. So this is definitely, I don't want to cast any aspersions on him for calling them what other people call them. He, he knows what he's about, and he's a super honest and generous individual. And the stuff that he has is really nice. Like I got this Nigerian emerald from him recently, or I bought it from him. And it's my first emerald that I'm excited to facet up, even though it's very, very tiny at a reasonable price. So this piece of Libyan desert glass is a tektite. It was formed in a meteorite explosion or blast, maybe impact that either melted sand in place and reformed it into a high temperature or high pressure like shock form of quartz called the Chatelierite, or maybe it, maybe it sort of created a vapor vaporization of the desert sand that re-fell out as molten glass, which I think would be even cooler formation history. I'm not sure if the science on that is settled yet, but this was definitely formed by a meteorite. These Columbianites from Columbia are marketed as pseudotectites because they share some similarities with tectites. Maybe not this one in particular, but these have sort of, you know, interesting textures to them that share some similarities with tectites that have been found. Some of them are elongated and, you know, have kind of this mottled texture for, that could be formed by cooling in the air, kind of like uh, some trinitite samples. If you go check out my trinitite video, you'll see some details there. In doing further research, I know, and now you know, these are obsidian. There's no question about it, they're obsidian. Just a little bit of research and you can discover that they're obsidian for yourself. And that makes them very similar to Apache tiers, where these are a couple of Apache tiers that I faceted into a matching set of squares. They look pretty neat, I think. The inside of these Columbianites are kind of clear like Apache tiers. They have some interesting features. Maybe there's some veils in a couple of these and maybe some bubbles or something, but... Oh, and on Kyle's channel, he did cut one of these in half with the kind of modeled appearance to it. And it looks really cool. So you should definitely go check out that video of how that looks when it's cut in half and polished. It has kind of a lunar surface, even more so than just, you know, the sphere feature to it. It's interesting. But... These should not be called pseudotectites because we know they're not pseudotectites and we know and the miners knew that they're not pseudotectites as they were discovered or as they were mined. And the term pseudotectite can only be applied to something or should only be applied to something that when it was discovered was thought to be a tectite and was later reclassified as a pseudotectite. So if this piece was discovered, you know, 50 years ago, and they thought at the time that it was a tectite and classified it as such. And then, you know, through advances in analytical capability, they were like, oh no, this is obsidian. 
we need to fix our mistake. And so they would publish a revision and downgrade it to a pseudotectite. But because we know as this was discovered that it was not a tectite or even a pseudotectite, we know it was a piece of obsidian with interesting features. You can't call that a pseudotectite. So I know, I know it's kind of technical and hopefully not too confusing and I'm explaining it well enough, but a good analogy would be in the field of meteorites and pseudo-meteorites and meteor wrongs, where things that are absolutely not meteorites are share some characteristics with meteorites. Calling these pseudotectites would be like calling any random piece of slag glass a pseudo-meteorite, which even though that piece of slag glass might share a couple of features, like something that kind of resembles a fusion crust, or a couple of regma glips, or uh, I don't know, some very being very metallic, since it can be formed from an ore body, uh, you know, the, the remnants of that refining process. That doesn't make it a pseudo-meteorite. What makes it a pseudo-meteorite is if it was classified as a meteorite, and then they're like, oh, wait, no, whoops, that's not a meteorite. It looks like one, but it's not, but we need to revise the classification, so it's downgraded to a pseudo-meteorite, because at the time it was discovered, they thought it was a meteorite. We know these were not tectites at the time they were discovered. Calling these pseudotectites is like saying you found a pile of slag glass somewhere in the woods and just started mining it and saying, oh, I found a pseudo-meteorite mine. That doesn't work. It, it, that won't fly in the scientific community. And I don't think it, it should fly in the, you know, rock and mineral world community. And that's why I don't think these should be called pseudotectites, and I don't think you should call them that either in the future. Now, so the terminology argument aside, I am also not a big fan of calling these pseudotectites because I think it's done by the miners or the whoever's buying this and trying to resell it to basically jack up the price to make it more valuable or rare just by association where if you call these, basically, they're highly degraded Apache tiers. Not, maybe not degraded, but they're a lot more weathered than some Apache tiers, which is why they have these interesting features on the outside. But by calling them pseudotectites, that's sort of rarity by association. Therefore, they can demand a higher premium for what is basically obsidian which I don't think obsidian needs any help. It can look pretty cool on its own. Okay, I think rant over. I'm still very excited to cut up. I think I'm gonna cut up this big piece into a couple of smaller pieces, and I'm gonna try cutting one in the Tic Tac design, see how that compares. And I have a Princess Trilliant by Tony Collins, which is available on the Gemology Project website, but this piece of paper is actually his modified version for fluorite. And that's because this Libyan desert glass has a lower refractive index even than quartz. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but I think it's like one in the 1.4 range where quartz is 1.54. So I wanted to get a lower refractive index diagram and he just went ahead and modified it 